طيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا بكم يا اخواننا في مساء يوم الجمعة التاسع عشر من رمضان نادي مخاطبة اللغة الانجليزية بيديروا الاساتذة المتطوعون واليوم الاستاذ عبد المنعم استاذ لغة انجليزية في جامعة بحري حيدير الليلة لاسباب عرضية يغيب عننا الاستاذ وليد فشكرا جزيلا لك يا استاذ على تطوعك والتزامك Uh, hello everybody, good evening. Good evening. Uh, first of all, before I start, I would like to say that uh, very sincere condolences to people who had been killed during revolution time. And second of all, uh, thoughts and prayers to people who had been killed. And uh, welcome to you and welcome to our English club in the podium of Sudanese researchers uh, initiative. So today we are going to talk about a very important topic and our topic today is about peace because a day before yesterday we talked about justice and yesterday we talked about freedom. So today we are going to talk about um, peace. So please come around here and try to participate. So we are going to just facilitate um, your, your let's say participation. Just try to be uh, strong, don't be shy. Try to break down the psychological barriers that you have. Uh, it is not important that your English is strong or something like that. Even if your English is little, try to come and participate. Try to break down the psychological barriers. So before um, that, I would like to say that teacher Walid is absent. That's why today I'm going to be a coordinator. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to our English discussion uh, club. So today is about peace. Before I give you opportunity to talk about this topic, I'm going to give you a picture. So first he introduce himself and then he will add something. Then we will start our discussion. Uh, hello everybody. Uh, really it's uh, my honor to be standing in front of you here. Uh, and I highly uh, appreciate your coming here and your present. It's really amazing. And and due to our culture, uh, and due to our, and due to, uh, and due to our controversial topic today, uh, that's uh, about peace. So before we are going to speak about or uh, take, uh, okay. Hey, I, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Abdul Latif Babikir Suleiman, a uh, student at the uh, Khartoum University, Faculty of Art, Department of uh, English Language and uh, Russian. Uh, and otherwise, uh, I'm to be a, 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 a semi teacher at the PC uh, Institute. So today's topic is going to be uh, peace. Okay, and before that, there's a uh, certain question should, uh, should be asked and then you have the chance to respond to that. So the first question will be, what does it mean peace for you? Are you living in peace? Uh, and is it important for you to have uh, peace in your life or uh, what do you think about peace in generally? This is, will be the question and you have to uh, answer about it. And the, the matter of speaking here, it doesn't mean that I have to be qualified enough in order to speak. The matter of communication is not having advanced vocabulary and can and show off. The matter is really so simple that you have to say your opinion or thoughts in a simple way that everyone can understand you. That's the point. And don't be shy and don't be afraid, okay? So like, when you come here, if you just introduce yourself, that's enough. Because you prove to yourself that I did something, which I stand in front of many people. That's, and uh, thank you. Oh, thank you, teacher. So this is my colleague. So we are going to open the chances for you to participate. And as he mentioned that, it doesn't matter how little your English is. The most important thing is come here Stand in front of you, the people and uh, audience and try to come with your idea. And always try to let your tongue free. 
don't be afraid, break down psychological barriers, and uh, try to just come and express your ideas in a simple way. So the question that I would like to ask you right now, what does peace mean to you? Because during this revolution, we have three slogans. The first one is freedom. And the second one is justice. And the third and the last one is peace. So freedom and justice has been already has already been discussed. So today we would like to talk about peace. What does peace mean to you as a concept? Okay, so participation from you, chances are open for you. Okay. What does a peace mean to you? Okay, uh, if you don't want to participate, I will choose randomly, okay? So you have to raise your hand up and just take your chance, with you, please. Guys. Okay, there we have Give him a harsh clap. Uh, thank you for all. Uh, I'm uh, more thank for the Dr. Anwar for this initiation and for this use for this initiation and, and we thank him to progress and to uh, continue to uh, participation with this done uh, for all. The peace, peace is uh, important in the all life and is, uh, uh, also is a uh, first stone to build uh, community, nation, country and other uh, artificial character to uh, need peace. Without peace, you cannot live. Uh, in the Islam, the peace is uh, all the the Quran is uh, speak about the peace and the Sunnah speak about peace. But now we know we, we see the, in, the, in the Islamic countries all opposite of the peace in Syria and Yemen. Uh, of, uh, we 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 uh, we very under for they are Muslim or not. But in the Western Union, we we, we saw with with uh, our eyes the these countries live on the peace. All Pacific for in the Austria, uh, Austria country, Austria country near the German, Austria uh, have the institute, institute of the peace, have the institute of the peace, and the peace is a is a method or is a program study in the university from the one year to the last. So the man with this uh, idea become uh, uh, all the behavior of this man be best, best fit for me. Also, also the, the country law. The law is a uh, invitation in any way, in any place, in any uh, part of the country. Not like the Sudan, racism and discrimin uh, discriminations and other bad things. They are against it the best. Also the trick and many, many, many bad and uh, uh, orsi, uh, orsi orcs uh, look like the, the former government uh, do. Uh, I, I am very uh, wonderful and I'm very uh, happy because this uh, gen generation has a peace, pacific for look like uh, this uh, symbol of the revolution, justice and peace and the civilian uh, governor. So this, this uh, generation has many uh, information about the base and, and uh, basic uh, or basic, basic uh, method. Uh, thank you for chance. Uh, Very hard to love for him. Really, we do appreciate your participation. And he, talks about, he talked about uh, the importance of peace. So, do you think that peace is important? So, yes. Thank you. Very hard clap for him. Hard clap. So, thank you. What's your name? Uh, so, hi everyone. My name is uh, Tayyip. Uh, so, firstly about peace. So, peace itself, people think that being a peaceful guy is actually like 
uh, it's kind of weakness. Like you are so weak because you are peaceful. You do not actually harm each other. Like you do not harm other people. So being a peaceful guy is actually so difficult. So peace itself here in our revolution, it means that making this revolution true without harming or attacking or like destroying our properties and destroying our, our attacking the military itself. So doing this thing is actually a very hard thing and being as a Sudanese people with this revolution, with this peaceful revolution, it's a great thing to be done. So we should actually be so uh, like uh, happy from ourselves because we did this thing. And we can see that, we can see all the countries that made actually revolution and they started it with, with, with destruction and with attacking each other. We can see that we, they, ha like they showed us this image to make us be afraid from the revolution itself. To stop our revolution, they put this image in our eyes. But at the same time, we said, no, we do not actually want to be like, we do not want to do this thing, specifically in peace. Because not actually, it's not only about revolution, even when you are fighting. Like we here in Sudan, we do have these things. Like whenever we are like, uh, one of us is driving his car and the other one, he blocked the road in front of him. So we will start fighting directly, right? We will actually waste our time with fighting more than wasting our time in something that we is actually beneficial, right? So fighting and making bees is actually like, being a peaceful guy will actually make your life is uh, like so great. Like this time that you waste uh, with fighting, you can actually d uh, do uh, like a good thing on this time, right? So being a peaceful guy is not actually kind of weakness. It's actually kind of strength, like because it requires a lot of strength to be peaceful, not to be like. But at the same time, being uh, to attack people, it does not actually have like you do not have to have that courage to attack people i can attack everyone but being the weak point or as we think that the the person who like does not attack the person who defends only himself we consider him as a weak person right actually he is not he is the one who's strong and the one who's attacking he is the one who's weak because we we attack whenever we feel that we are weak but we defend ourselves whenever we we see that we are strong so strength actually comes from peace, it does not come from attack. And thank you. Okay, thank you. It's really a great uh, points of view uh, you have uh, declared. Uh, I would like to rephrase them uh, in that pe being peaceful doesn't mean you are weak, but you are powerful and strong. And being, being, being peaceful is the main reason why our revolution has success, okay? We are uh, calling peaceful, peaceful, peaceful. That's why we are here all, okay? And, you know, he also mentioned that peaceful uh, can overcome war, okay? That, that p p the person who is peaceful is really more uh, uh, educated or more sophisticated or more aware of what's around than the person who is uh, considered to be a uh, fight uh, or war maker, okay? Uh, thank you, brother, really, I, I do appreciate you. Uh, chances, is, chances are open, okay, we have brother here, sorry, and then there, okay? They can, no problem? The next chance will be for you. Give him a harsh love, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. All right, I'd just like to uh, go back to the first question, what peace means to me. All right, peace means to me that the opposite, wor the opposite word of peace is war. And subsequently that the war has factors. And one of the factors, the main factor, I believe, of the war is not accepting other idea, whether it is, uh, you know, idea of way of living or creeds, and mostly, mostly the, more the clashes that is happening in the world and in the history is because of religious views. All right. I believe now uh, what is going on in the world now, uh, it's all about the views. You know, the views, the opposite views leads to wars. So in order, in order to live in peace, and what is peace is to train ourselves to accept 
other point of view, other point, other other people perspective. And it's not like easy. We just say, all right, we're going to accept other point of views of other people. And believe me, it's not it's not easy even to accept someone way of life rather than his belief. And it happens many times to us that when you you know meet some guy and had discussion with him. Uh, when you realize that he's having different opinion from yourself, immediately you start judging him and you start acting like you don't want to be close to him. And sometimes it leads even to enmity if you are in a higher level of command. So this is the first question that I, I believe that peace means to live in harmony and not to harm other people's way of life. And if it happened that someone has harmed your way of life, you just have to be assertive and tell him, please, I just don't accept this way of treating me. And the other question was, what is important of peace? If there is peace, there is no wars. All right? And uh, I believe that when there is peace, there is creativity, there is... I mean, we human beings will be raised from the level of animal to being human being. And I believe that, uh, you know, most of ignorant people who are not having open mind to accept other people's views and other people's way of living, that will, you know, lead to disastrous results. And if I want to, like, give a comment about what has happened here in, in Sudan, the demonstrations, it was, you know, marvelous example of peaceful revolution. And though there are some kind of uh, mishaps, I would say, from some people of, among us, uh, because we cannot you know, be perfect, this is a large amount of people, we cannot control their, their behavior. But I believe that uh, the peaceful way of doing anything will really lead to uh, prosperous results. And thank you all, and peace be upon you again. Thank you very much. It's a very good participation and I like your point that you mentioned. So he started talking about what does a peace mean to him, then the importance of peace. So very hard clap for this guy, very hard clap. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, brothers, thank you. And uh, I'm so happy to be here, listen uh, to English club. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to Sang the teacher and were uh, the foundation of uh, his club. Today he's absent and uh, here's uh, as a teacher he's uh, instead of him. And even thank you for the audience uh, whom those they are listening right now to English club. These are kind of uh, good things because uh, these teachers they need to develop the people to know how to speak uh, English because the Sudanese people. They are good in English, and even the Sudanese people, there is a lot of teachers. Right now they are inside the country, outside the country, and thank you for them. And uh, even I want to say that uh, my condolence to, to, the, uh, to the U.S. religion. They have did good, and uh, they removed uh, they remove the Bashir regime, and uh, thank you for them. They start, and uh, right now they, we are going in uh, their way. Today we are uh, speaking about a peace. And a peace, uh, it means that you are going, that is mean uh, you must live in security way. This means uh, peace. If there is no peace, everything is going to be bad. Peace in everything, even in your home. If there is no peace with your uh, family, there is nothing, it will be okay. Even the U.S. Uh, revolution, they start, they start uh, something called uh, the revolution or our revolution. They need to be, to live in peace. And that is why they start and struggle. All right, and uh, even they are still struggling. And my great, uh, my great to them. And peace. Right now, even uh, right now, we are not in peace, but we will be in peace. Why I'm saying that we are not in peace? Because many years ago, there's a, 
the something called the previous or the the previous something called previous regimes they have been uh, ruled us in a bad way and that's why right now we want to change them and the willing of god uh, by the willing of god will change everything the use of religion i'm sure about that if we are uh, if we are uh, something called we are, if we are uh, starting in something called in unity i'm sure will every will change everything in our countries called sudan but need us to be in one hand we need uh, something called we need something called uh, civilian 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 government this is our aim we need something called civilian government and this is okay but this way will be in peace will be in peace we need justice and equality and even we need a lot of things by this way we'll be able to control ourselves or be in unity right now we're in a peace why i'm not, i'm saying that we are, are not in a peace as you know sudan something called found many problems why because they have not, we have not been in a peace and the bulim of god the sudanese people or the youth of sudan they became wise i'm sure every day everyone knows where he's right he's and that is why if the sudanese people they did not become in a in a in a, in a, in a wise way they will never be in, uh, in the streets and need their wise and they want to change uh, something called change the government uh, something called uh, right now the army people are uh, ruling us we are not going to say the army they are bad but even you know the civilian civilian mind it is okay there is a lot of people inside the civilian we have doctors we are all uh, we have a kind of a lot of peer we have a lot of kinds of people they need to change to change these uh, armies in order to rule the civilian government and this is okay by this way we'll able to live in peace but if you are if they are ruling us and they are hanging or just catching in the government this is not okay we'll never be in a peace and i hope that uh, peace will be in uh, in sudan and uh, every something called in uh, other states i hope that uh, sudan will be in peace and sudan not going to be uh, sudan it is not going to be in a peace unless the sudanese people or sudanese youth become wise and struggle well and uh, come in unity way by this way we'll able to be in a peace and uh, please uh, brother thank you i want to change uh, i want to let the another change so for others and uh, thank you very much question question yeah. is there any type of peace except the tips of uh, peace like a swarm something like peace of mind peace of soul what should be your response for that if there are any type of peace except the peace against the war like peace of mind what is your response for that do we have types of peace this is the question okay according by understand you you say that uh, just uh, only the peace of war I is it so this you you have been talking about peace against the world is there any type another <coughs> types of okay peace? all right this guy he said that i'm uh, have been speaking uh, the peace of uh, war yeah really there is war if you know the war that is mean the people are going to fight maybe about many years 30 years even as you know the uh, the removed regime al bashir regime they are being fighting fighting in sudan even by the something called by the revolution as a people they have been fighting me about 30 years yeah even then uh, some of them they have become and do their peace like that even peace this is a kind of war yeah the, uh, that is means someone is be uh, outside maybe has a lot of uh, many years outside like the bush and he become uh, inside a city or inside a uh, 
something called in a in a state and he signed the peace and because he want to live in a peace yeah this is a kind of, this is a piece of war and even peace by yourself that is mean peace inside yourself because you are not in a peace you want to be you want to live in a peace way like what like what if you have a if you have a problem like uh, with your family uh, in your family uh, even you have a uh, your other uh, brothers you have uh, your something called uh, your heart uh, and his heart's not okay you want to be something called you want to be peace with him uh, right now uh, even we are here we want to be in a peace like in Sudan in our home everywhere even inside ourselves we want to be in a peace this is a kind of peace and I hope that the peace will around all the world, not just in Sudan. Yeah, this is my... Uh, and even the guys, uh, because I have... Uh, I had a long time, I did not speak. And that's why I forget a lot of things. Yeah, but I hope that every day I will come and share with you. And thank you a lot of uh, you guys, and thank you. I want to say that today I'm so happy because... Uh, May, if you know, I had May two years. I did not come and start and uh, speak English uh, a lot of uh, in front of the audience. Uh, today I'm so happy. Maybe next time I will, because I'm not ready. Maybe next time I will uh, dig myself and speak uh, more than this. And thank you a lot. Okay. Thank you very much. We are really happy too to have you uh, in your participation here. So uh, the guy asked a very clear question. The question was. Um, does peace has, uh, let's say, another meaning? Like, uh, okay, there is different types of peace, okay? For example, there is external peace and internal peace. So, why we came here? We are asking for peace. Because in Sudan, there was war. Am I right? Uh, the war in Darfur, people suffer a lot from war. The war in Blue Nile and South Kordofan state, People there suffer from wars. Wars means conflicts, bloodshed. Then people came here to ask for what? Stopping of war. So peace, it doesn't only mean that absence of war. It means that internal type of peace with people. And as Muslims, when you meet somebody on the street, what do you say? You say, peace be upon you. Salamu alaikum. Am I right? Yeah. So this is a type of peace. So we have a lot of participants right now who want to participate. Very hard club for them. Very hard club. So we're going to take this guy. Then the next one, okay? So very hard club for, for this guy. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I, uh, I greet you salute all the audience here in this uh, military, her military headquarters. Let me also agree to salute the, the Sudanese Research and Initiative. Also, I agree to salute all the families of the martyrs and high condolences to those refugees who there with their blood in this revolution. Also, if you want to try to, uh, to divide the meaning of these three words there, why there is a lot of people there chanting peace, freedom, peace, and justice. But they, are, they don't know the meaning of these three words. These three words, they are, they are, uh, they are come together. The meaning, they are come each other. Firstly, from the freedom, peace, and justice. Let us try to divide the meaning of the peace. The peace is meaning how the people they are living safely, and there is no one hurt each other. As you know, here in Sudan, we are we are in war since more than 50 years. We are in war. When in the uh, in 2005, when the 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 the, the the peace the peace signing start there is no peace 
and the ground. So we need the real, the real peace here in this country. So the peace, the peace, the peace. Uh, we we need the peace for the everything. We need the peace for ourselves. The peace for the uh, we here in this uh, military headquarters. We learn a lot of things. Here, the, a lot of people they are living, uh, they are living here in a peace peacefully. When the revolution starts in the 19 December, we are started by the peacefully. So in the in the previous, there is also a lot of revolution is coming, but those revolutions are failed because this those revolutions because they are not peaceful uh, discriminations revolution. So. Uh, our revolution is uh, is success, so we are we are in peaceful revolutions. So here there is a lot of people they are learning. If there is some uh, some people they are conflict to each other. If you say that, so we are come here in peacefully. If you say peaceful, there uh, uh, those people they are not they they, they they don't fight it together. So. We need the peace for uh, everything. We need peace for ourselves. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, teacher, do you want to say something? And then Charles for. So my brother here has mentioned something great that uh, we have to all be collaborated uh, and then uh, so peace will be uh, upon us. And also has mentioned, uh, one of them has mentioned that the definition of peace uh, is when people are able uh, to resolve uh, the conflict uh, and conflicts without uh, violence uh, and being able to work together in order to uh, have a, a better quality of lives. That is the definition of peace. Okay, uh, thank you. All right, uh, freedom, peace, justice to the all Sudanese. Freedom, peace, justice to all Sudanese. Freedom, peace, justice to all Sudanese. Freedom, peace, justice to all Sudanese. Uh, all right, so uh, the topic of today is about peace. Really, peace is to be out of conflict. Peace is to be out of being killed and being in fighting against brothers. The importance of having peace is to uh, is to what to have that money to uh, to spread it to the education and health and whatsoever. The country that we have had it before, the money that is to, uh, distributed to the general command or to the military, more than sixty or ninety six percent. In health, only 1%. In education, only 1%. If we consume the money for education and health, this is the peace and all people will live in peaceful way. So many territories where your people, they are killing each other. So many people are killing each other. And so many people, they hate the word peace and they never feel the word peace at all. If you see your brother, it's being killed in front of you, then here you are going to be out of, out of what? Out of peace at all. Even if people, they said that peace, and I'm going to say that, and I'm going to deny, and I'm going to deny, there, there is no peace at all in all over the world. That's why, if you would like to implement peace in Sudan or in everywhere, then you need to work hard. It's not an easy way to implement it here in Sudan, particularly. Then in Sudan, so many people, they hate each other. Right now we do hate each other. And this is the way that we cannot, allow, we cannot you know, like implement peace at all. I cannot accept you, and you cannot accept me, and this is one of the, one of the, one of the types of peace. If we break this idea and we accept black and white, this is the first thing that we have to, you know, like, we have to speak about it. If you accept a black or a, a white accept a black, this is the one of the greatest movement of achieving peaceful in this country. And where, <coughs> I mean, the previous regime, 
play a big game for Sudanese people, I mean that for Sudanese people. They what? They divide people in order not to be in peaceful way. They know that when we cooperate together as like today, we could take home, we could take them out and that's why they played this game in order to take whole Sudanese people into many groups. They don't allow us to, you know, like to stay with uh, ex people and that's why they achieve and that's why they succeed. So uh, I don't want just to go on uh, this because so many people they would like to speak. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Well spoken. We like your participation. Um, the other day I have met uh, a journalist from um, a country called Holland. Holland. I have met him here within this, uh, let's say, field. He told me that this is the most peaceful protest I have ever seen in Africa and in the world. So that will be um, what we have seen in the eighth of Ramadan. When attackers come and attack us, the guys and protesters, they dive by peaceful way. So this is the real meaning of our revolution. Very hard club for them. Very hard club for them. So for the newcomers, our topic is still about peace. So the chance is for you. So very hard club for him. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, great. Uh, actually, I listened to the majority of you and uh, all of them were speaking about the outer peace. Uh, actually, we got no exact definition to tell you about what is peace exactly, but uh, most of the definitions agreed in one point, in the way that we did. It should be peacefully. So I got two types of peace in my dictionary. I got inner peace and outer peace. So outer peace does not exist. I can say it's uh, fiction, imagination. This outer peace will never happen unless we got the inner one. So the inner one that we miss, the inner peace. If I ask you, oh, what's your problem? You say we want peace, uh, we want peace, peace will never come if you do not achieve the inner peace. The inner one that we miss, not only Sudanese, but all human beings are looking for peace and they should invent or create the peace inside themselves. First, number one, we miss the inner peace. That's why we lost the outer peace. So you cannot search about something out if you don't change inside. So now from our side, from inside, we are not peaceful. We are not peaceful. We are fighting each other. Now, a uh, close example, like we act, we pretend that we accept, uh, for example, people from Darfur. As we all know that there is a big racism uh, being created by the bad previous government between us and some places, the southern, northern, western, eastern, and in the central one. So like, if someone from there come to marry your daughter, you will never accept. But you try that and you say that, yes, uh, we love them and they are part of us and we are human beings. We pretend that we are living peacefully, but we are not. Why we don't accept them in reality? Not only like this, also they will never accept us. There is something missed between us and them, and the northern one, and the southern, and the western, not only just Darfur, all parts in Sudan. We fight each other, we look at each other to negate to criticize, not to, to, to help or to take our hands together. We criticize anywhere. Now, go there. You will find some people are negating others. Who gave them rights to negate? Who gave them rights to criticize? Because we don't have the inner peace. What is the inner peace? To accept yourself first with your mistakes before your positive things. You have to have, or you have to accept your mistakes, number one, the bad things that in your personality. Number two, you have to accept yourself like this. Yes, I'm good in this. I'm bad in this. I like myself. I'm happy because of myself. So once you accept yourself, you accept everybody, whatever the regardless of the behavior is. You don't care about the behavior. You don't have the right to criticize. No, this is bad person and this is good person. There is no definition for good and bad. Why? What you see is good for another person is bad. There is no exact definitions. 
So once you accept yourself, you accept other. Now, I want to say, if you want really to see peace in anywhere, please achieve the inner peace inside yourselves. Accept yourselves, accept others. The outer peace will come automatically. So what we miss is the inner peace, not the outer peace. That's it. I have a question for you. Uh, have you studied psychology? Because the way that he's, he talked about peace, really interesting. I like it. Because in psychology, there is a statement that um, external, external behavior is a result of internal reality. So this is the same. Have you studied psychology? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I studied engineering, but uh, I got many courses about the psychology. I like psychology. I love psychology. And psychology runs inside the blood of everybody. Yeah. But uh, we don't know. It. We ignore this. We don't like uh, practice this psychology. Uh, psychology is a big science to speak about, but it's uh, a type of peace. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, brother. Really, uh, what have you mentioned is really great and brilliant. Uh, I like it very much. Uh, so he declared only two, that there is uh, internal peace and uh, outer peace. Uh, and in order to be peaceful with others, you have to apply it with yourself, that you have to be peaceful uh, in order to spread the, the peace uh, around you. Uh, thank you very much. That was really uh, uh, acceptable, and you know, uh, we'll put it in a remark. Uh, so, uh, give him harsh clap again. Give him harsh clap, and give this guy also a harsh clap. Okay. Uh. Okay. Good. Uh, good evening. Let us say good evening. Okay. Since I have received the declaration or the statement of uh, today's topic. I've been looking for the connection or the relationship between peace and our Sudanese revolution. Okay, here I have to ask myself a question before we start speaking. The first question is that the journey of this revolution has come across some various steps, right? Okay, it did not start uh, since the 19th of December. This is not our revolution. The revolution started since 1989. Since those people, or as what we say, Islamic Movement Brotherhood. Islamic Movement Brotherhood. Jama'at al al Muslimin in Arabic language. Islamic Movement Brotherhood declared itself as the representative of Islam here in this country. And this is the issue. Okay, Sudanese people tried to protest and to stay against this Islamic Movement Brotherhood more times, but they did not succeed. The issue here is that why did we succeed this time? And what is the relationship between our success and peace? Okay, people in past tried more times to change this regime by violence, which is the opposite of peace. Okay, what does violence mean? Here it means to negate or to stay against other people, not to accept them. Okay, peace is the absence of violence, as same as white is the absence of black. We did not have white unless we know black. We did not have ugly people unless we have beautiful. Okay, this is the issue. It means here we need to to declare the relationship between peace and our revolution. As what we remember, last revolution or uh, 2030, 13, people tried to change this regime by violence way. They were not organized. Okay, they tried to kill each other in order to declare themselves as the, uh, the lookers for, for authority. Okay, those people took wrong path, which is violence. For that reason, they did not succeed. Okay, the Islamic movement brotherhood, the Islamic movement brotherhood got the benefit from illiterate people. Okay, this is the issue we need to ask ourselves for. Okay, those people, we can divide Sudanese people as some groups. People who were born in 19th and 18th, those are somehow educated. Why? Because they took a larger chance. Because in the 17th and 16th, we have lack of, of school and we have lack of education. Okay, the Islamic movement brotherhood used or utilized illiterate people in order to kill each other. They divide them because they are illiterate, they are ignorant, they don't know how to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong, unless you tell them. Okay, those people don't know what is good and what is right. Okay, if you come and say to them this is good and you are the educated one, they will believe you because we have lack of education. We appreciate what we lack of. For example, now we appreciate, for example, a scientist. 
We say those are the good because we are not a scientist. We are, we are not educated, we believe everyone. Okay, the issue is that illiterate people got used or utilized by educated people. Okay, the Islamic movement Brotherhood educated itself perfectly to utilize Sudanese people. Okay, those people now, they did not participate with us in our revolution. Why? Because those are old and they say that we are not polite people and we stay together in uh, military command and also ever. Some bad words are said. Okay, those did not participate because of the lack of knowledge they have. The lack of knowledge they have. But people who protested against this government are removed this bad regime or this bad Islamic Brotherhood system in Sudan, the educated people. Okay, they had to have two chances. Okay, either to follow the previous revolution or to create your own and new one. And this is a problem here. Okay, we did not take the previous one. Why? Because we had taken an experience for so and we got killed. Why? Because who kills you is not educated. Look at all soldiers who killed us in the streets. Those are not educated. Okay, their officers ordered them go and kill those people. Those are disbelievers for Islam. For the best of my knowledge, what I believe personally is that the ignorant person should have two sides. If he stays with you, you will be a successful person. If he stays against you, you will be demolished. Okay, more times they, they killed us because of the lack of money. Okay, the peace we look for, we started firstly by declaring the statement, which is peace, freedom, and justice. Okay, then we told them what is the meaning of peace. Peace does not mean to stop fighting. This is not this is not the clear declaration. To the best of my knowledge, what I believe the term peace is a psychological disorder. Psychological disorder, as same as fear and, and, and uh, madness. Some people don't believe by madness. Some people don't believe by fear. This is a psychological disorder. We don't have a term called peace. To the best of my knowledge. Because we fight each other and we kill each other. Okay, we want not to lose those people. Okay, we say this term is peace. You get? Having people with us is called peace. But peace doesn't exist. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Well spoken. So, uh, as he mentioned that uh, peace is psychological. Because people who governed us for 30 years, they were so aggressive that they killed people in Darfur, Blue Nile, and everywhere in Sudan. Every corner of Sudan, they killed people because that's struggling with themselves because they couldn't be able to accept themselves. When you, when you cannot able to accept yourself, that means you're going to be very aggressive. And that's why external behavior is a reflection of internal reality. That was the reality actually. So I would like to give you a chance, then chances for others. For those who came, uh, let's say later, our topic is about peace. And thank you for online viewers. Thank you. Yes, welcome. Hard club for him. Hard club. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so uh, speaking about inner peace and external peace, I actually disagree with you and my friend Hamad when he mentioned that like uh, inner peace comes, uh, external peace comes when the inner peace comes first. Like the inner peace comes before the external peace. But actually I disagree. Why? Because what brings the inner peace itself? Inner peace comes from the satisfaction, right? When I am satisfied with myself, I will become like I will have the inner peace when I am satisfied with myself. But let's take it here as a Sudanese guy. So let's take it as a Sudanese. Here, I cannot actually provide my family with the basic needs that they need, right? So how can I be satisfied with myself when I, I cannot actually provide those things? When I am at the, at the, like, all day, I'm thinking only about only one thing, that how can I bring the bread? How can I bring the food? It's only the thought that I have. So the inner peace cannot actually come without the out peace. So the out peace comes first because that is the satisfaction. When I can provide the basic needs, when I can actually live a legend of life, the life that I want, the life that I need, and after that I will be satisfied. 
But, but if I am not satisfied with myself, if I am not satisfied with the way of living, with the country that I live in, with the prices that, they, that I have in the country, how can I have the inner peace itself? So the inner peace cannot come. And about the, 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 the peace and the, the, the differences and the racism and the tribalism that we have around the country. Actually, it's not about the thought that we have and, and it's not about the knowledge that we have and it's not about is he educated or he is not educated. Education is important, but at the same time, awareness comes before education. So we need to be aware before, to, before being educated. Yes, here, the only problem that we have that awareness, it should be taught at the school, at the university. And we did not actually have that at the school, at the university. And actually, even the, the, we as uh, educated people, as we like pretend that we are educated, I do not believe that we are educated. Because the education that we have at our schools and our, our, our universities is not an education, actually, to say that we are an educated people. So education, we do not actually have it. So the importance of education comes after the importance of awareness itself. So we need to be aware of ourselves, our uh, our needs, our, uh, like the, the, the thing that we have in our country. The, 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 the as I can say, like, uh, my own, like, rules that I have. Like, we need things, like, uh, the police guy, it does, when he comes to arrest me, I have, like, things, that he cannot actually cross. Like he cannot come and beat me without doing anything, right? That we did not actually know. It. Like we were afraid of policemen. Like he can do whatever he wants to me because he is a policeman. Actually he cannot. What is the policeman himself? What is the president himself? We just know that, that the policeman and the president are just an employee for the people themselves, for the civilians themselves. So they are here all, only to serve us. They are here as servants. They are not here to rule us or to beat us or to get us to jail without doing anything. So this is the awareness that we need. We need to know all the rights that we have inside the country and we need to demand those rights that we have. This is the awareness that we speak about. But knowledge does not actually do something to you if you are not aware. And thank you. Thank you very much. We do appreciate your participation. Uh, one of the previous partic participants, he mentioned that a peace, a peace is a subject is taught at a school one of the, in one of the countries. So in Sudan here, if you want to um, solve the problem of war, problem of aggression to others, by teaching people about peace, that's what we want. So we, we would like more participation from you before we go to the last point. Yes, the chances are open for you. I feel that you're sleepy. Sagatat ma sagatat. Sagatat ma sagatat. So welcome. Yes, chances are open for you. For the newcomers, our topic is about peace. We have already talked about justice and freedom. So today is about peace. Very hard clap for the guy. Uh, good night. Uh, actually, I don't have uh, more information about uh, peace. Uh, but I would like to say that uh, I'm the one who has been uh, displaced from his uh, uh, area. I'm the one who has been uh, w born in the, a land where the wars. I'm the one who has been uh, uh, prevented. Uh, I'm the one who, who has been uh, uh, taken his uh, country, his things, his money. So according to that, I would like to define uh, peace according to my uh, uh, my uh, my understanding. Uh, peace it means living a life with salem, self, uh, salem, uh, salem, safety, uh, and uh, education for children, food, and quietness, and living uh, a life that you want uh, and uh, participate in, in a country or participate among uh, the peoples at the, the right at the right thing uh, peace it means uh, living a life with others accepting others enjoy with them share with them whatever you uh, whatever uh, the problem that have 
and uh, for for what we have uh, come all together at the military headquarters uh, is uh, seeking for Salem safety. So that's why uh, our uh, revolution wise is succeeded because uh, we use uh, strong and powerful uh, weapons, it means uh, peace. That's why our revolution right now is different from the, uh, uh, the, the other revolution around the world. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Roly. This per person has mentioned that he's been displayed and he has been taken uh, his rights and okay, his duty. Uh, this is, you know, like happening in Sudan. It's not something new. Okay, well, who never knew, like, he, you have to know it. And maybe, I think, all the people have knew this idea through this uh, revolution in this uh, military uh, headquarters. Uh, thank you very much. That was really a great definition of peace, that you have to be, uh, okay, uh, having a soul heart that is clear, and you have to have, okay, uh, you know, love with yourself, okay? You have to love, you have to have love with yourself in order to create uh, peace and being peaceful with yourself and being peaceful with others. So the chances are open and our topic is peace, okay? Peace. What does it mean, peace for you? Are we peaceful or not? Okay, the chances are open. Okay, if you don't want to raise your hand, like I have, uh, okay, okay, no problem. Okay. Okay, give him a harsh club. Okay, I just uh, organize our time. Um, uh, of course, when we speak about peace, first we have to thank because we have common enemy, and this common enemy is already defeated due to our peace, which we really feel that we never feel peacefully unless we defeat this our common enemy. We have to thank that Bashir have been defeated because of common interests, not because of individual interests. We have to know peace, which is, 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 is started to come. And to be peace within yourself, please, ladies and gentlemen, is not an easy task because we are bringing with red eyes within our family, our community, our country, even our regime. And that's why to collect all this to be peace, to love yourself, is not, of course, and easy. Because we are bringing with the concept that you have been directed by your own family. You are better than everyone. We are supposed not to blame even our regimes, previous regimes. And regime, this is, is implemented due to our community. Of course, if you are going to speak about peace, you have to know there is something called common interest, not individual interest. Because we love individual more than common interest. We are supposed not to be selfish. And there is a book I wrote, I will just detail, giving you details about that book. The book describes Sudanese nation in three categories. First one, he said that Sudanese nation, Africa as a whole, not Sudanese even, they are greedy nations and they are low mentality nations, and they are subjective nations. And the we give, they give us 3W, even this nickname we have, we prove, of course. 3W means war, wine, and woman. It, it, I read some book, is written by one of Russians. He described to be black itself is crime, and this book you have to go and read. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to blame those people that are giving, describing us like this. Even Obama keeps saying that Africa, they are no longer going to be as human beings. They are not like human beings. And it's not his fault, it's our fault. Because we always never giving us, give ourselves value. We never love ourselves. And by the way, the sense of love is, is, is the only mechanism which is speak about comments. When you love, this means that you love yourself, you are going to love somebody. And of course, discrimination which is implemented with ex regimes, we are a victim of this. To remove this concept is not easy, it's not going to overnight. 
unless to do our best to overcome. And this group, which is right now, is, is start to, to say they're right and they, they feel that they're really living in peace. Even just practically, it's going to be practical because I know this is very lighting my nation. They are not like our previous ridiculous nations. And I call all ridiculous nations, I call them the paralyzed nation. They are not really open mind nations. Nation which is giving us shallow way, not practical way to know ourselves. And previous X generations, they are the reason we build our problem right now. And I know these new generations, of course, they are open minds. And they are trying to overcome for all these difficulties. My only last conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Sudanese as community, they are very peaceful and very coexistence. And they have sense of attractiveness, not destructive. But intervention, which is eliminated by West, or West, because I call those our regime, they were not really Sudanese. And, and we talk about, about recent regimes as, because some friends saying that those regimes who ruling this country previous, they were my Goma center kids. They are not, because my Goma center is not recently. It's very old nations. It's very old, I mean, center. And that's why we believe that those whom ruling ex ruler they were my Goma center because they don't have sense of human beings. They don't have sense of humanity. And that's why this generation, they're different than X generation due to their acceptance. I, even, even I, I, I wish they should implement it, what they're speaking. They're going to say that they're going to implement and remove some single tribe in this constitutions. If they remove this tribe concept, of course, we have a sense of love. We being coexist and we contribute positive thinking and of course we are ready to do that we're not doubting ourselves but the only thing which i really fear our coexistence should not be even x or our older generation interfering because they are always violating our right they are always distracting our life not to be forwards due to don't have sense of love they're always giving us because we are upbringing with dictators regime dictators, family dictators, we are totally collapsed and devastated our life due to have absence of, of peace. But of course, peace coming, and peace on the way to come. But prefer ourselves to accept this peace and to implement it politically. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very hard to love for him. Thank you. Um, uh, really, through participation that we had till now, we have come to know that the real meaning of peace so as a definition peace means uh, absence of war but it doesn't only mean the absence of war it can also mean that internal type of peace so there is two types of peace internal one and external one the internal one sometimes is called tranquility if i pronounce well it's called tranquility that means the peace within yourself so external behavior is the reflection of internal reality as we have mentioned as a psychological concept so what we have to do is that we have come to the last point that's a question directly i would like to ask you after civilian led government we are going to establish a country where there is peace justice and freedom but the question that i would like to ask you right now how are you are we gonna I establish a country where there is peace. How are we going to establish a country where there is peace in civilian-led government? So thank you. Welcome. Very hard clap for him. Thank you for chance. Uh, peace means justice. Peace means justice. Look at the conflict area. Let us to make a, a little example. Noba Mountain, Darfur, and Blue Nile, and even north of Sudan. There is a big violation of rights. Whenever there is a violation of rights, that means there is a war. 
if you want to stop this war and to bring peace, you can give all the people their rights. Justice is the one of human rights. Justice and freedom is the one of human rights. Whenever there is a violation, there is no peace. And no one can go quietly on the road when there is a dangerous. When there is a dangerous. And no one can sleep peacefully on bed when there is a dangerous. I, to bring peace, that means to give, look at all the liberation movement. All of them make a war because there is a violation of rights for everything in the life. Lack of education, lack of wealth, and lack and lack. Give those people their rights, then you can stop the peace. The development country respects the, the, respect the human rights. No military government. Our main problem in Sudan here is the military government. They knew nothing about the, the human rights of people. Look at, at the negotiation now between our between uh, First, uh, the civilian the and uh, military. They are not respecting the people. They are not respecting even this revolution. They can stop the negotiation with, by one by one party, not by other party. How can the pieces become? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, one of the steps that uh, to, to establish peace in Sudan is, uh, first of all, we have to bring civilian-led government because military government was an obstacle against, uh, you know, peace in Sudan. As a result of governing of a military government for more than 30 years, we have seen walls in all corners of Sudan, walls in Darfur, Blue Nile, and South Kordofani states and different thai, different uh, lands of Sudan. So the question is, is still here. How can how can we be able to establish peace in the new Sudan? What are the steps that we have to follow? Because in negotiation, they said that the very six months will be about uh, the issues of war and peace. So this is a question, more participation from you, the guy behind there. Very hard club for him, very hard club. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for all, for being part of this uh, program. I think, uh, yes, I really appreciate this uh, program because it's, uh, it's part of uh, this uh, political movement uh, within the revolution, within the national revolution, uh, to get rid of the uh, National Congress Party and to be prepared for the uh, next period. And all we agree is that the coming stage is a stage of uh, democratic transition. Uh, to make peace, uh, I won't say that uh, making peace uh, is uh, it's so difficult. It's more difficult than to, uh, difficult than war, than to instigate or to trigger war. Uh, so you can't uh, destroy a nation just in one minute. You can't destroy a community in just one minute by rocket or anything else. Uh, but it's, uh, it needs a long time uh, to make peace uh, through negotiations uh, which need, to, need to resources, uh, need to arrangement, and so on. It takes a long time to, to make peace. In Sudan here, as uh, we see, now, right now, the reality is, uh, uh, is uh, there's a conflict in the reality of Sudanese people. So we came here because we are seeking uh, peace. We came here, all of us here. Uh, in our history, the, the country suffered from the long time civil wars. How many civil wars here in this country uh, passed through this uh, history of Sudanese peoples? Uh, now, as you see, the civil war in the mountains, the South Kordofan there, and also the civil war in Darfur, uh, civil war in uh, two areas, the Blue Nile and the Mountains. Uh, there were war crimes committed. Uh, many people uh, were killed by the government militias. Uh, instead of uh, instead of building a country, 
to building nations and serving community, the government ruling party, the Islamic, the Arab ruling party, uh, which was headed by the president Omar al-Bashir, who was wanted by international criminal court, the government uh, was fighting the people, the killing people everywhere, not only through the through war, uh, also through uh, very bad economic uh, hard conditions the hard conditions in Sudan. The, most of Sudanese people so, the, the live here under extreme poverty land because of war, because of the current war. Uh, I think to make uh, peace, we need to look up, look up uh, the root causes of the, the conflict, the root causes of the conflict. The root causes of the conflict in Sudan is there is no balance of uh, the development. If you see in the marginalized area, uh, there is no uh, for example, there is no uh, institutions, there is no education, the schools, the hospitals. Uh, where I see in Khartoum, you see, there is uh, the, the schools here and uh, hospitals, so people uh, receive uh, any kind of service here. Uh, we pass a long time, we pass a uh, long distance to come here to Khartoum to receive education, to receive high quality education. And so this means there is no balance in the development. Uh, and also there is no balance in the distribution of wealth, of uh, power. There is no balance. I mean the representation. Uh, and also there is marginalization, the economic marginalization, and also discrimination. And, and there is a very important issue that we uh, were not able to solve it. This is an identity problem. The identity problem is one of the, the problems of Sudanese people that uh, we are unable to uh, solve since the uh, independence of this uh, country. And we have to find uh, a solution for this problem. Uh, we, we have to identify ourselves, who we are, who are we? Are we Arabs, uh, Africans, or so? And so uh, we have to also to, uh, through the uh, the right and through the logical policies to rule this country because this country is a, is a country of rainbow, the country of uh, diversity. As you know, there's Muslims and, and uh, the Christians and also there are people who don't have, who, who don't believe in God. And so how can we uh, manage, how can we run a country like the Sudan? Uh, we need uh, the, the system, the political system that is that is uh, the consistent with this uh, diversity. The, the democratic principles government, technocratic government, a government that respects the diversity of the Sudanese uh, people. And also we have to respect each other, we have to accept each other. There are some people who uh, don't accept, who don't accept if you are Arab, who don't accept Arab, if you are Africans, who don't accept Africans, if you are Muslims, who don't, uh, don't accept uh, Muslims. So, it's very important to respect and accept each other. And this is the reality of the, the Sudanese country. And we have uh, many examples. We have uh, South Africa, where people to live in harmony, where people to live in uh, coexistence, where people to live in tolerance, uh, religious tolerance. That, that is what, what we need here. And also we have another example here in the United States of America. The people also live in harmony there. And so, uh, and you see that uh, since the independence of Sudan, so we lack the uh, permanent uh, constitution. We have no permanent constitution until now. Now, right now, after we, uh, after, after the coming stage, we need, yes, we need uh, civilian power. We need civilian power. The civilian, the coming civilian power should uh, pay consideration to permanent constitutions where there is suppression of powers. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, because there are many uh, participants coming here to uh, today. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I like a, po uh, a point that he mentioned that to wage a war is easier than establish peace. And this is uh, what's going on. This is a, a very sad reality that we have. So one of the things that uh, to, to solve the problems of peace in Sudan, first six months should be a balance of development because we had a problem of uh, marginalization that means some areas remote areas in sudan are not developed there is no hospitals there is no schools 
and there isn't any type of services for people. And I have, I have uh, talked with a guy who came from very marginalized area in Al Gadarif. He came to Khurtum. He told people in Gadarif there, I'm going to Khurtum. People amazed. Okay, you're going to the center. So when I visit him, really very bad day in Umdurman. There is no water or electricity. I said, okay, so you, ha you, must, ha you must have been in Gadarif there. You, you don't have to come here. Because in Gadarif there, you, there is electricity and there is water. But you come here with, with nothing, just a desert. So this is the problem that we have in Sudan. Uh, I like the suggestion that he said. If you want to do, solve the problem of peace in Sudan, you have to make a balance of development. If there is the, uh, services in Khurtum here, same services should be in Darfur and different remote areas in Sudan. So thank you very much. The guy has a question, I think. Yes. yes. <coughs> question for all. Let us be realistic. Do we want to live in peace through forgiveness or should be punishment among all those commit crimes? Do you think that forgiveness brings peace or punishment it will bring peace more than because we're lack of common grounds? Which is going to bring peace? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, because uh, the last 30 years, there have been a lot of crimes. And we know people who commit crimes. So if you want to build peace in Sudan, the question is very clear. Uh, are we going to help accountable, help people accountable for, for committing crimes? Or we're going to forgive them? Okay, just tolerate. What happened was what happened. So we have to forget the past and think of present and future. So what do you think about this question? And actually, it's a very good question, actually. Very, clap, very hard to love for him. Very hard to for him. So the chances is still open for you? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. OK. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, before I answer uh, Mr. Chairman's question, because it's very uh, a great question to be answered by all those of them are protesting here, including for us. So I would like to mention very important point. Uh, as Chine Ochebe, as you know, uh, he mentioned in his books, uh, he said that I'm not going to write the book by my language. I'm going to write by foreign language. All people can read, or the foreign can read to understand what I'm doing and what is my culture. Because he disagree with his uh, fellow writers. They say that we are going to write with our own language. And he said, how they colonize us? They're going to understand our cultures and as we are against them. And he wrote in English language. And today what our friends, panelists doing is very good because, you know, you can find that English activities and French activities, at least here, and this is very good way what you are doing. I hope that we can participate with you as we are teachers, as you are students, so we can accumulate our ideas. So according to the question of peace, as he mentioned about uh, how can we establish peace after we gain this our revelations, until I think it's not yet finished, we are still doing. And Mr. Chairman, I'm asking about, do we can punish those whom they are you know, commit crime, and why were you used to saying that Adam goes out of them? So we need immediately punishment those are commit crime. You know, this regime, the commit crime that has been, you know, met in Sudan, you know, it has be, never been made it during the World War One and World War Two. That's why, for me they are supposed to be punished immediately because we can't accept it, you know. We can't accept it, these people to live with us, you know, after this long period, they had been genocide in different parts of, I'm not going to say just only in Darfur, because Darfur is the one of the places that has been genocide directly and rapid women, you know, girls and young this is unbelievable because I'm a witness. I was there. What's happening? You know, some people they don't know. And even in Kurtuban and Blue Nile, what's happened? What these people met? You know, they must be, you know, 
you know, commit, you know, they may punish it immediately. That's why what's going on here is it is it's a problem that's having been civility ruling and military ruling. These people they want to play for us. You see, they're not going to punish these people if we let them like this. Because they just they're going to say that we're going to go to the court and uh, to see what they met and they don't talk about what the revolution or what the protesters has been killed. Who killed it? Where are these people? They say they're in the, you know prison. Do you saw them one day? Do you saw these people? We haven't seen them. Where they are? So they are feeling with us. But what we are sending our message with different language, you know, we are here to be these people, be punished. All of them, if they don't punish it, we are going to be here forever. We are going to be here forever. Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Chairman, my question, my answer to you, these people must be punish it immediately while we are here. We are not going to be out unless these people to be punished. And thank you again and again. You know, I do appreciate it, you guys, you know, because this is the great message you are sending to the world, not just only Sudan. We all these people, they are sending message in Arabic, but here we can have three languages, French, English, Arabic. So this is a great message to the world. As we are Sudanese, let us to have solidarity. Hand by hand, we can able to develop, to live in peace, to stop the world in different places, in different areas, in different states. We can be, we can sing about Sudanism, as Mr. Jongrang say that. Let us to say, sing about Sudanism, not just only Islamization or Christianism. They cannot bring us together. But Sudanism, they can bring us together. Thank you. Uh, thank you, brother. Really, uh, what I've been mentioning is really great and uh, massive. And one can say it's the, the way that we as Sudanese, we have to think this way in order to change our gen uh, generation, the coming generation, and we have to rule our country this way because these uh, ideas are really brilliant. Uh, and still we are running our uh, discussion here as English club. Uh, I would like to enlighten you that the topic of today is peace, okay? And as uh, Nelson, okay, as uh, Young Kennedy said, or Martin Luther said, uh, peace is daily, weekly, monthly process, gradually changing, okay, slowly road all barriers, and quietly building new structure. And it's clear, okay, that peace can, uh, okay, can bring everything. And also there's a quote saying that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do so. Okay? This is the words of peace, okay, that enlighten us. And without peace, no more we are going to. And according to the question, it's only by, okay, having a fair punishment for those who are being uh, okay uh, have commit uh, okay suicide and genocide okay killing people they should be punished firmly in order for the coming generation to know that if you commit something like what they have did okay you will be punished the same that's the it's a clear message that they should be punished and in front of us here and I ordered all of people to see. And so the chances is open, okay? We need more participants, and we are running out of time, okay? There are maybe three or two chances. So, okay, two chances, hurry up. To, so we have here when? Okay, so no problem. This one, and then here, okay, no problem. You will all take your chances, okay, come. Give him a harsh clap, guys. Give him a harsh clap. I know you're sleepy in the okay, the words is a lot, but you know you have to just wait us, okay? It's hold us a minute, okay, we'll finish. Okay, good night. Uh, thanks first uh, for chance and uh, thanks for all audience. Uh, I'm here just to uh, make comment uh, comment about the uh, question that mentioned before. Uh, which is better to to get peace 
through punishment or through forgiveness. Actually, this depends on uh, type of crime and type of fight or type of war. What do I mean? Uh, if this uh, war, this uh, crime has been made between two tribes, for example, and uh, there is a reflection between two groups or two tribes, and I think here it is better to make peace through forgiveness. And uh, I have example here in uh, Rwanda, and uh, they succeeded to reach uh, to peace through forgiveness. But uh, sometimes there is type of uh, problem or type of war, uh, uh, which is very difficult to 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 reach uh, through it by uh, forgiveness. For example, here we have uh, people have been killed, and uh, they are more affected. In other words, what I want to say, real is very difficult to to answer this question because. Maybe I'm not one who are affected by this uh, war or who are affected by this problem. So that's why we make the choice for those who have been affected by war, someone who have been killed. So, and really, but for me, as a special opinion, really, no, nothing, nothing better than forgiveness. Nothing better than forgiveness uh, at the same time someone or a person who, who needs to be punished must take his punishment. Remember, for, forgiveness is better, but someone really he needs to be punished must get his punishment. But remember, the main thing, forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, there is nothing as better than forgiveness. And I consider uh, a punishment as a forgiveness for them, okay? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so we have here and here, okay? It's great. Okay. Uh, give him a harsh club, guys. Okay, thank you for this great chance to be here. Uh, and the first thing, I want to send the salutation or great salute to whom pay their souls and their blood as we can be here and join together to think about what should happen through the peace or how can we create or create the peace in our community or in our country. I think I wanna or I gonna answer the question last which has been here uh, but so according to my opinion, I think if we going every time we're going to forgive any person who command the crime of sins, I think this thing can be repeatedly. You see, can be repeatedly. For example, if we have been forgive this whom command the criminal sins through the uh, or this whom they rule the country through this time, it may be the person who coming next, maybe also can be command this second time. So as it cannot happen repeatedly, we need us to banish them. And then not according, you know, as without rule. I think it's better with the just way. Through the just way, we have to banish them. And if we banish them, it means that it should not be again next years through the generations. So, through this, I'm gonna see it's better to banish. And if we're gonna make free, uh, sorry, uh, peace, I think peace, it needs more effort for us. How can we be to accept ourselves fiercely, and how can we be able to accept others? Okay, through this, I think people think that through the politics or through the policy, the peace should come. No, 
the, the peace it needs through the community. Okay? Through the communities or through the civilian should be there's what? Peace. After that, through the, I think through the political powers and so so, they sign through that, through the papers. But there's no peace come. I think there's more agreements has happened for peace, for peace, for peace, but there's not peace. Because it is not through the what? Through the community. So we need inside our communities there should be peace. After that, you know, can rise out of the whole community. The second thing and the effective thing, okay, which is left people does not be, I think also the policies of external countries also effective for our peace. I think it is better also we can see it. So I think the time is so short. Thank you for the chance and we have the time. Uh, thank you very much because we are running out of time so that's why we got you short. So, 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 sorry for that. So the last participant before the last one we have uh, yes, you are the last one. Or okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, I would like to start by name, the, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Praise be to Allah. I'm uh, so glad to stand uh, to sit here in front of you. I would like to speak about some some point which is uh, is associated with the astonishing uh, question. You uh, before the last speaker, uh, this person said mm, it's about forg uh, forgiveness is something good. Yeah. Forgiveness is something good to forgive people, but to but it's not good to forgive whom uh, those are commit a crime. It's not good. If you forgive them, if you forgive them, you will find many many crimes. You will find many murders, killers there because they know the result beyond the the for, uh, the killing is forgiveness. No. We need to kill them. We need to to punish them. Yeah, we need to punish them to take our right. And after we punish them, we need to achieve our peace. And and freedom, peace, and justice is three words. But I will consider them all of them three words as a one word, as a one quotation. We cannot divide every single word as it is. And that's all. Thank you very much. Freedom, peace, and yes. justice are interrelated. We cannot disconnect them. Thank you very much. So before the last participant, that guy and you will be the last one. So yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Very hard clap for him before we come to an end. What show? Um. Uh, uh, first, uh, I would like to thank each single person who is. Uh, uh, in sit in, I mean, to, uh, who is here with us in the military headquarters? Um, I mean, the topic is really important actually because uh, it has a relation to, I mean, the situation of Sudanese, uh, I mean, Sudanese community or Sudanese society or we as nation. And um, uh, before I I, um, I started to, to 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 answer the question. Um, let me say that, um, let me say something about, about the, the, the platform, I mean, the Sochi platform, uh, which it offers, I mean, Sochi uh, topics are really a platform that, 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 I mean, we as youth need to express and to voice our ideas. So I thank, I mean, the, I mean, the Students Researchers uh, Foundation for, I mean, to, uh, offering such uh, opportunities. Um, the, I mean, a concern is a question because uh, I think peace is opposite of, I mean, to war and violence. So I think we are not in peace here in Sudan. We are not living in peace. So, and uh, the peace are many. There, there are many kinds actually peace, okay? So there's like a peace of mentality, there's peace, um, I mean psychological peace, 
Uh, so we don't we don't feel that we are living in peace. So it's a problem, and to resolve this problem, then um, there should be I mean process. Uh, we are calling for I mean civilian government. So so we we, we we think that this is like a solution for creating I mean you know peace for Sudanese people as 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 a nation. So. And this, I mean, civilian government also has got like foundation. So I think one of these foundation is that we need to fix like, I mean, justice. We need to fix justice because we know that so many people, I mean, their, right, their rights have been violated. So how can we get back, I mean, the right of these people? and let them to feel that they are part of this country so i mean the process is that i mean those who committed crime should you know should be uh punished or should be held to account this is one and also this is one of i mean, I mean one of these ways of what of uh, compensation to compensate for those who the uh, for those who the right I mean, um, have been violated. So, and also, another part of compensation is, um, is I mean, t this is like psychological. Um, I know has like psychological aspect is to, you know, um, to announce for the general. Uh, I mean, t uh, you know, to, to to ask people to um, to try to. Uh, to this, I mean, to spread, I mean, the, 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 to spread, I mean, the, you know, the love between people, and uh, also uh, because, I mean, the, 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 the second, I mean, foundation of, of, of civilian government is that we need also to have like, uh, um, now, um, I forget the, I mean the right word, but yes, um, uh, I, 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 what I think is that that those who commit crime should not, you know, uh, you know, they shouldn't be left. They should be held to account because it is the first step um, for creating, uh, I mean, the, I mean, peace for a country, and that's why we are saying tit for tat, or we are saying blood for blood. So they should. You know, they should be, uh, you know, count. Sabrina, thank you very much. We do appreciate your comments. So, the last participant that we have, so come here. Um, so, welcome. Very short. Uh, good night, everybody. Your name? Um, unfortunately, because we're running out of time, I'm going to make it quick and short. Okay, I'm going to make it quick and short. Okay. The question is still is how we how can we establish peace? I'm not going to speak about peace itself because I've been living my life as a peaceful person in a peaceful subject because since I was born, peace was born with me actually, and it's something in my genes as Sudanese person. We have to learn how to live together as a brother, how we're going to perish together as fools. That also one of my Michael Lowe's think he says that. Okay. The problem is we do not accept each other. As someone previously he says that there is people who they do not believe in God itself. There are Christian people, there is Muslim in our country. There is a lot of customer in our country. We have to learn how to accept all of them, how to deal with them peacefully. So peacefully doesn't mean that you have to live your life, lay in your head in your bed at night, and there is no war, there is no bullet around you. No, peaceful and peace actually is big word. Big word with a lot of responsibilities. You have to accept each other, and we have to learn how to be as a Sudanese people, not like Arab people, African people or so. Just Sudanese people. 
And that's it. Thank you. Yeah, really, thank you very much. Before we come to conclusion, I would like to give an opportunity for Dr. Anur to say something about our topic. So, about peace. So, what do you say about it? Thank you very much for running the, today's session. Uh, peace. I once attended a, a training at the United States Institute of Peace. That's in Washington, D.C. And one exercise was remarkable that they asked the attendees to go to the balcony and just take a deep look at the scenery. And when, they came, when we came back to the room, they asked us, what did you see? And then I said, I saw a bird, someone saw a tree, someone saw a car, someone saw a woman that walking. And then they asked us, who is lying here? Who's lying? The fact, we are all truthful. No one lied, right? So one of the peace building tools is to reconcile, reconcile with yourself that everybody around you might have the truth, not only you. So in order to build peace, we have to give trust to people around us. And this is one of the fruitful outputs of this sitting. We see everyone, we trust everyone, we love each other. And this will bring about change and the civilian government. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, really, uh, it's a great uh, example. And I can say it's a fantabulous uh, piece of example. Uh, only I'd like to invite you that to end the war, uh, so instead of sending guns, send books, instead of sending uh, tanks, send uh, tents, instead of sending soldiers, send teachers. Okay, this way we are going to overcome and we are going to have peace. Okay, as we light you, uh, this is uh, the end of our journey as English club. So daily from uh, 11 to 12, uh, we have English club. So join us. And uh, our to topic are really uh, okay, uh, controversial. So just participate and you will find yourself here. I have my brother here who would like to say something. So really, thank you very much. Uh, we do appreciate your participation. And we do. Okay, okay. So really, really, there is a lot of guys here. They want to participate. So only Kandaka that we have, as he said. So very hard club for him, for her. Yeah, that's great. So take your chance, in short. Okay, thank you so much for giving me the chance. Uh, really, uh, we came here every day and we see people that participate in different uh, parts of the Sudanese speech. But this is my first time to come and find uh, Sudanese researchers. They are talking deeply about our problems and how we can find uh, solutions for that things. Really, I, I appreciate for those who are uh, create these ideas. Uh, we can't find ways easily to come across to our problem and solve them. Especially if we have in the uh, the politics problem, really. That is a very uh, complicated issue here in Sudan. And this is the issues that led us to be now down. As a people that we are the third uh, world, uh, uh, as African people, really we have many. But I think Sudan is a, a special country. Uh, we can find that things easily. But now protesters here, and this is a very great I, I can call it the holy place, really. Why? Because now I came from a workshop and I said for them, I'm not going home to sleep unless to come to this uh, holy place to take the pressure of, uh, of the people, nice faces, people that they're having uh, ideas that want to come, that they want to come and, and having how, how, how to find the, the, the solutions. Uh, as a man that came across, this is also one of the things that 
we we just um, we are just talk and being against things that unless we don't know more about it this is a kind of participation this is a kind of how we can reflect our issues to the to the, the other world because as we as Sudanese through media, really, we don't have a very nice uh, um, uh, ways as uh, English stations. Outside, you can find CNN, uh, BBC, uh, many stations that uh, people, they reflect what do they have through their problems. But here in Sudan, uh, only we have in the um, Omdurman station as a radio, we have in Sudan uh, also TV, uh, many, many FM stations, but that's not enough for us. We have to come across for the English uh, department as a media to reflect for the people what do we have exactly. So the world outside can respect us as a Sudanese. As um, really Sudan is a great uh, country in Africa, no one can go behind this country. Why? Because we have many resources that if we say water resource, even the human being here in Sudan, they are intelligent enough, they're having many things. If we want to know more about this, we can look at the people outside Sudan. If we look at the doctors in London, we have 200 doctors in London, and they are taking a very uh, big department there. They are, they are working hard there, and the British people, they appreciate that. This is especially... 20, 20, thousands there, UK. So imagine, this is only one country, and the white people, they are not respect their people. If they did not find you that you're working hard, you are creative enough, you're making more things. This is one country, as I said. So uh, really, if we're having a very good environment, we can make a very nice show for all people and our problems. As it is a very big problem, it's easier, we can find ways that to solve it. Really, I appreciate you all, and I love you all. Thank you so much for the time. Here she is, um, a real example, a model of uh, Kandakas in Sudan. Very hard club for her, very hard club. So, our topic uh, today was about peace, and we do appreciate all the participation, and all the participants who participated here. And finally, I would like to say that we will fight. Our revolution will fight black domination, and Arab tribes domination. We will cherish the ideal of democratic and free society in which you all Sudanese people live in peace and in harmony and equal opportunities. So saying goodbye is not forever. So all of you saying goodbye is not forever. Saying goodbye is not forever. Saying goodbye is not forever. Saying goodbye is not an end. Saying goodbye is not an end. Saying goodbye is not an end. They will they will simply mean we will miss you until we see you again tomorrow. Thank you.